here's a Tumblr post from the blog Biphobic, posted in August of 2022. She wrote, Honestly, I think hetero or bi women are fully aware of the way men are. They aren't stupid. They're just obstinate. They have, in a way, weighed the risk and reward of partnering with men, I think. They just kind of smudged the numbers to let them do what they were ultimately already unwilling to ever give up. They don't want to live a life without romantic and sexual relationships, even if it will literally save their lives, because to them it automatically equals loneliness. So they refuse to do so, even if it means they need to gaslight themselves into it. They know at least enough of what the risks are, and their brains are twisted into knots trying to rationalize it, because they do know. They know when he insists condoms don't feel good. They know when he gets huffy if she isn't feeling up to sex. They know when she gets pregnant. They know when he gets angry at them and starts smashing things. They know when they overhear the things he says while he's gaming. They know when his friends come over. They know when they talk and he interrupts. They know when their gender reveal tells them it's a girl and he storms off. They know all of it. They just don't listen to that knowledge. The ideal version of their lives in their head is one with a man in it. And if they can't have it, they aren't interested. Opposite sex attracted women won't prioritize their own interests because their interests go against what they are taught their whole lives to yearn for. Other than plain lesbophobia, I think this is part of why they get so angry at lesbians, even in radical feminist spaces where criticism of men and partnering with males should reasonably be expected to occur. They think we're privileged because the risk we face is at the hands of society rather than the hands of our partners, and that's a lot easier to digest for some people. You expect society to harm you as a woman anyway, but your partner? Even when they don't feel at all jealous or bitter in that way, they cling to the homophobic myth that lesbians have just as high or higher domestic violence rates. Of course we don't. That's extremely obvious to anyone with even the tiniest hint of critical thinking skills, but it shifts the argument onto us so they can act like we are taking the exact same risk. We aren't. They want to believe that we're their oppressor somehow, and we're just angry not all women are lesbians, that lesbians are just as violent and dangerous to their partners, and we are trying to somehow trap heterosexual women in relationships with us. They put their anger onto us because the thing they're actually angry at is never going to change. They want what they were let to believe was possible when they were little girls. They want a good man, a marriage, safety. They want to be loved and cherished and protected by a man. They want to matter to the men they desire. It's a cycle. Opposite sex attracted women go against the things that would help them. They start to identify with the things that actively harm them. They praise men. They raise them from little boys cornering girls in their class to ask them inappropriate questions to teenage porn addicts to adult serial rapists. They fuck and marry them. They give them babies and become their servants. And when they've completely devoted their lives to men, they teach their daughters to do exactly what they did. Every time a woman does not fully teach the risks of being with a man to her daughter, the cycle continues. My mom told me she was thankful I was a lesbian because she would never have to see me in the way her mother had to see her, beaten black and blue in a hospital bed by her boyfriend. She has also said that she was sad when I came out because she was going to miss out on moments she dreamed of bonding over. First boyfriend, birds and the bees, first time, first pregnancy scare, wondering when he'd propose, the announcement of our first baby. Women know that both of these are extremely plausible outcomes, that you're going to meet bad ones before you meet the one good one, and sometimes you don't make it out alive from the bad ones. They just find ways to rationalize it. You can't take men away from us. What, do you want me to be lonely? You're just trying to get me to sleep with women. I don't know how those other women ignored the signs, but my man wouldn't hurt a fly. I'm strong enough to get out if it ever got too bad. You can't force me to be alone. I'm able to be independent. Having a man is my choice. It's empowering to me. I'm using him for his body, actually. He's one of the good ones. He's an ally. He would never hurt me. It's like there's this imaginary perfect man in their mind they've been building up idealizations of since they first started dating. He's kind and involved, funny and smart, 
respectful, loyal, who loves what she loves and thinks she hung the moon, who's passionate but chaste, who respects boundaries and desires only her. He has a grip on them that is never going to be argued away. It's nostalgic. It's comforting. It feels safe. He's what we end up arguing against until the illusion completely shatters all on its own. They aren't willing to give up on him.